Hello, my name is Shahriyar Shahriyari, and this is a lecture in a series of lectures on introductory linear algebra based on my book, Retrolinear. The subject of this lecture is an application of diagonalization of matrices, and we want to apply them to solving recurrence relations. In particular, we will look at the Pingala Fibonacci numbers and find a formula for them using matrices and diagonalization of matrices. So let's get started. Let me remind you quickly what eigenvalues and eigenvectors are and, and the main idea of diagonalization, although there are previous videos that go into much more detail that you should be looking at before watching this video. If A is an n by n matrix, then, um, and if you have a vector V in Rn, so a column vector, V is a column vector, and lambda is a scalar, then we say that V is an eigenvector of A with eigenvalue lambda if V, first of all, is not the zero vector, is not all zeros, and also that when you multiply A by V, you get a multiple of V, you get lambda times V. Lambda is the eigenvalue, that number lambda, the scaling factor is, is, is um, the eigenvalue, and the vector V is, is the eigenvector. Eigenvalues are the roots of the characteristic polynomial. That's the determinant of lambda i minus a. Lambda i minus a is an n by n matrix. i is the identity matrix. When you multiply it by lambda, you get the n by n matrix that has lambdas down the diagonal. When you subtract a from that, you still get an n by n matrix. The determinant of that is called the characteristic polynomial, and the eigenvalues are the roots of that. Uh, we had previous videos that talked about why that is and, and about the characteristic polynomial. Um, Eigenvectors are the non-zero elements of the null space of that matrix lambda i minus a, or the kernel. Kernel and null space are interchangeable words. Now, if you are in a situation where um, you have an n by n matrix again, and if you can find a basis for Rn made up of eigenvectors of a, so that means finding n linearly independent eigenvectors for this matrix a, if you're in that situation, then um, then, we're, first of all, each one of these is an eigenvector. So each one of them is of the four, has the property that with A times VI is some scalar, its eigenvalue times VI again. Um, then um, if you make a matrix P out of those eigenvectors, so the, each column of this matrix is one of those eigenvectors. The eigenvectors are column vectors. So we make them columns of this one matrix, this N by N matrix. Then the fact is that P inverse AP will be diagonal. And um, the entries on the diagonal will be uh, the eigenvalues. When we say something is diagonal, a diagonal matrix is a matrix that has zeros everywhere other than on the diagonal. On the diagonal, it could have zeros, but it doesn't, that doesn't have to. But off the diagonal is all zeros. This is, this is what diagonalization means, that if you have a matrix, if you can find yourself um, in uh, linearly independent eigenvectors for that matrix, then then um, you can diagonalize the matrix. And this is what it means to diagonalize. It means write down this matrix P and notice that P inverse AP is D. The matrix A and the matrix D will be similar matrices and have a lot of similar properties. Again, watch the videos on diagonalization or, and or similar matrices. Okay, now what we wanna do is we wanna apply this, uh, this idea to rec a recurrence relation. So consider the following sequence. This is a sequence you, you may have seen or not. There's the sequence of numbers, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34. What is this sequence? Well, it starts with 0 and 1. And then after that, every term is the sum of the previous two terms. Now, this is quite a discrete thing. You starting with two numbers, two integers, 0 and 1, adding them together and, and finding the sequence. And at this point, it's unclear what this has to do with linear algebra or with matrices or diagonalizations at all. So, so what? First of all, this, um, this sequence is something that I call the Pingala Fibonacci numbers. Almost everyone else calls them the Fibonacci, uh, the Fibonacci numbers. Um, uh, Leonardo Pisano, uh, who lived in the Italian peninsula um, in, the 12th cent in the, the end of 12th century, beginning of the first half of the 13th century, right through the Crusades, um, was, was someone that uh, uh, talked about this uh, sequence in, 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 his book, in, in his book. He gave a problem um, about uh, rabbits um, that, that ends up being um, about this sequence. Um, he, he's known now by the name Fibonacci, although that wasn't his name. His mom would not recognize him if you called him Fibonacci. Um, uh, his name was Leonardo Pisano. Uh, his, that Fibonacci was a name given to him by his 19th century editor. But 
generation, many years before that, generations of commentators in India, uh, starting with Pingala in uh, third, second century BCE, um, studied the same sequence of integers. So, so this same sequence was known in India long before Fibonacci. And for that reason, I like to call it the Ping Pingala Fibonacci numbers. Um, okay, and so what the question that we have for this relatively short talk is, can we find a formula for a n using matrices? There's other ways of going about this, but this is, um, and if, actually, if you watch my videos on combinatorics, you will, you will see plenty of things about um, uh, recurrence relations. First of all, the fact that they come up all the time when you're counting things, including the, uh, this Pingala Fibonacci numbers and their uh, recurrence, and also for various ways of uh, dealing with them. But uh, this one, this uh, right here, we want to think about them in terms of matrices. So what we're going to do, what we're going to do is we're going to construct a um, two by one um, vector zero one, then, and then we were going to make another one v one one one. Uh, v two is going to be one two. Where does this number come from? These are the consecutive um, elements of the uh, Pingala Fibonacci sequence. So zero one is the is the zeroth and the first element. Then the, then one one is the first and the second. V two is the second and the, the the second and the third, and so forth. Um, I started with the zeroth one, this zeroth one, the first one, the second one, the third one, and so forth. So V3 will be two, three. Those are the, um, the, the, the next two. And V4 will be three, five. Note that any number, any one of the elements in the sequence is in two of them. Like for example, this three um, happens in V3 is the second entry in V3, but it's also the first entry of V4. So why do I do that? So I just keep doing this forever. And Vn is going to be the nth uh, Pingala Fibonacci number and the n plus first Pingala Fibonacci number. So what? Well, then I notice something. Then I say that this matrix A, uh, which uh, 0, 1, 1, 1, ha has some relevance here. How, what's the relevance? What does that matrix has to do with it? Well, you'll notice that if you um, take A and multiply it by Vn. A was this matrix 0, 1, 1, 1. What was Vn? Vn was the column vector that had the nth Fibonacci number and then n plus first Fibonacci number in it. So what happens when you multiply? Just simple matrix multiplication will tell you that, well, um, the top entry is going to be a n plus one, um, and the second entry is going to be the sum of those a n plus a n plus one. But a n plus a n plus one in the Pingala Fibonacci number is a n plus two. So uh, what you really get when you multiply a by v n, you get a n plus one a n plus two, and that's actually the next term in the sequence. So multiplying by the matrix A, the matrix A's job in the world is you multiply by these, um, these and it gives you the next one. So, so in other words, if you start with V0 and you multiply, multiply A by V0, you get V1. If you multiply A by V1, you get V2 and so on. Um, and, and, um, um, and, and so if you multiply A by V1, you get V2. Uh, but, but you notice that V1 itself was A times V0. We just had said that. And so this is A2 times V0. So V2 is A, A squared times V0. And likewise, Vn is A times Vn minus 1. But then that's A times A times Vn minus 2. And you just unwind it all the way down. And you get that An, it's An times V0. So if I take this matrix A, if I could raise it to the power N, and then multiplied by V0. V0 is just 0, 1. If I could do that, then I would get the nth ones. And so that's the plan that we have, is to try to find out how do we find the nth power of this matrix A as a way of then uh, finding a way of finding what Vn is. So let's get started. So this is uh, the matrix A, 0, 1, 1, 1, and I want to find A n. And how do I do that? I diagonalize A first. So how do I diagonalize A? I look at lambda i minus A. Uh, because the characteristic polynomial of that gives me the eigenvalues. So lambda i minus a, this is two by two identity my, times lambda minus a gives you lambda minus one minus one lambda minus one. And then the characteristic polynomial is the determinant of that is going to be lambda squared minus lambda minus one. The roots of that are going to be the eigenvalues of this matrix. And if you put the, the, that determinant equal to zero, you get that lambda is one plus or minus square root of five over two. Those are, it has two eigenvalues. Note that square root of five minus one over two, which is not one of the eigenvalues, is what we call the golden mean. And, and so since the golden mean is something we know about, uh, might as well uh, write the eigenvalues in terms of it. So note that one over mu, 
one over the golden mean is actually one of the eigenvalues, the square root of five plus one over two. And, uh, and the other one is just minus mu. So uh, one minus square root of five over two is one of the eigenvalues, that's minus mu. And another one is one over mu. So minus mu and one over mu are eigenvalues. But also note that mu plus one is also one over mu. So you can think of the eigenvalues as minus mu and mu plus one or minus mu and one over mu. So um, I'm going to say that the eigenvalues of A are minus mu and my one over mu, but because I have two eigenvalues, each one of those is gonna have an eigenvector and those eigenvectors are linearly independent from each other. That's automatic. Um, in a previous uh, video, we proved that, that if you have eigenvectors for different eigenvalues, they're going to be linearly independent from each other. And so, a has two, because it has two distinct eigenvalues, it's going to be diagonalizable. We can find two linearly independent eigenvectors. Okay, so, so, so now we have this matrix A, uh, we don't know its eigenvalues, and, um, and, and we want to actually do the diagonalization. So, um, and this is something you can do in the privacy of your home, you don't have to do it in public. Um, the basis for the eigenspace V1 over mu, that just means all the eigenvectors for one over mu, uh, which was one of the eigenvalues, together with zero, is this vector mu one. Um, so, so that's one of the eigenvectors. In fact, you can check that if you like. If you take a and multiply it by mu one, you will see that you get one over mu times mu one, as promised, because this is the eigenvector with eigenvalue one, one over mu. Likewise, the, uh, the um, eigenvector for um, uh, minus mu, one of them is minus one mu one, and, and all the other ones are the scalar multiples of that. All scalar multiples of this other than zero times this are eigenvectors. Um, uh, and and, and so, so we have our two um, uh, I, linearly independent eigenvectors. One of them is mu one, one of them is minus one uh, over mu one. And because of that, we can construct our matrix P, uh, which, was, uh, uh, which was the matrix of those uh, eigenvectors. Um, I, I make that and you can find its inverse and, and you can, this is some uh, calculation. Its inverse is going to be one over square root of five uh, and the first column is going to be one minus one and then one over mu mu. Um, and then if you do that, then you know that P inverse AP is the diagonal matrix that has on the diagonal one over mu and mu and, and minus mu. And those are the two eigenvalues of A. Okay, so what? Well, we can use this to find A to the N. So, uh, little a to n is our Fibonacci, uh, Pingala Fibonacci sequence, and we have this matrix A, and we know that P inverse A P is D, and P was the matrix of eigenvalues, and, and from that, we can get that A P is P D, I can multiply on the left by P in this equation and get A P equals P D, and then if I further multiply on the right by P inverse, I get that P is, A is P D P inverse, and I do that because I'm trying to find a to the n. Okay, and so then what's a to the n? Well, a to the n means a times a times a times a n times. But each of those a's are uh, p d p inverse. In fact, we've seen similar arguments in previous videos as well. So we have p d p inverse times itself n times. But when we multiply these, every consecutive one has a p inverse at, at the right-hand side, and the next one has a p, and those two cancel. p inverse times p becomes identity, and woof, it goes away. And so the resulting thing that we are left with is just p d to the n p inverse. So to find a n, we just have to do this multiplication. And finding d to the n is not that hard because d is a diagonal matrix. And so d to the n is just one over mu to the n and then minus mu to the n. And so what that there is d to the n. And so a to the n is p d n p inverse. And if you do that, here it is. Um, it's sort of a messy thing, but that's what it is. You just multiply three matrices. We had the matrix P, we had the matrix P inverse, we have the matrix DN. It's two matrix multiplication, multiply P by DN, and then DN by P inverse, and this is the result you get. Okay, so what does this say about the Pingala Fibonacci numbers? Well, A to the N, uh, let me just remind you, the mess that we had in the previous slide is this thing, but remember that... Um, we wrote two, two of the elements in the ping ping alpha Fibonacci sequence, A and A and plus one, that was our VN. And what we said was that um, this VN is the same as AN times V0. So if you start with V0 and multiply by N, you get v, VN, but V0 is just zero one. So what, how, how do you multiply AN by zero one? How do you multiply a matrix by a column vector? 
you get a linear combination of the columns with the scalars coming from, uh, from the column vector. And so when you multiply n by 0, 1, you're really just getting um, the second column because you need 0 of that and, and you just need that. OK, so, so, when you multi so this a n a n plus 1 is just the second column. That tells you that a n is that top um, right-hand corner element of that matrix. I mean, this thing times that 1 over square root of 5. And so for, for that reason, we now have a formula for a n. a n is 1 over square root of 5 times 1 over mu n minus, um, minus mu to the n which the, this part of it is that uh, top uh, right-hand corner element. And then there was a one over square root of five at the bottom. That's what it is. And, and so now I have a formula for the Pingala Fibonacci numbers. This is a surprising formula because why on earth when you, uh, with the, the sequence was so simple, you start with zero and one and you just kept adding elements. What does that have to do with square root of five? And also it's not even clear that this AN is giving you integers. Like, is it clear that if I plug in 47, um, I will even get an integer, but you will, because what you're going to get is the 47th term in the Pingala Fibonacci um, numbers. So this was an application of diagonalization uh, to, li to um, uh, linear recurrence relations, um, and then you can solve similar problems in similar ways. This is the end of this lecture, and um, um, I will see you in the other videos, maybe.